Good morning and welcome to online worship at Mission St. Mary Magdalene. I'm Mark List, the vicar, and welcome to Advent Sunday. You will notice in the lessons and in the colors and in the music a different theme, and we'll talk a little bit more about that during the homily. Uh, it is a season for building hope, and one of the things I would commend to you is on the back page of your bulletin, there is that little preparing for Christ prayer box that offers a daily focus for our intercessions and for our prayers for others. So I hope you have downloaded the bulletin, prepared to sing up a storm, offer a joyful noise unto the Lord, and we begin our worship with a wonderful musical offering from Esteban in the Prelude. Everlasting 
Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear people of God, in the season of Advent, it is our responsibility and joy to prepare ourselves to hear once more the message of the angels, to go to Bethlehem and to see the Son of God lying in a manger. Come and save us, O Lord God of hosts. Come and save us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Come and save us, O Lord, our hosts. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our inequities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take, to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our inequity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember inequity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 80, 1 through 7, 16 through 18. 
Let us read responsibly. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are thrown on the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord, God of hosts. How long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors. And our enemies allow us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. The son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us light that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch become tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, 
you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the, state, when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I preach these words to you in the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. Well, we are on Advent Sunday, and the lessons are a different tone, a different theme. Hear this again. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. As awesome and awe-inspiring as that lesson is, with sun darkened and moon not giving light and stars falling from the heavens, the glory of that message is that Jesus will return. And not only will Jesus return, but Jesus will return in power and in glory. And that's why, at the end of this gospel lesson from Mark, we hear Jesus say, And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. You see, Jesus the Christ calls us, the Christ followers, to keep awake, to keep alert. And this whole idea of keeping away, of keeping alert, is at the heart of the Advent message. You see, Advent is a time of waiting, a time of watching, a time of staying awake, of being alert. Now remember, and in this year I really don't have to remind us of this, but life as a Christ follower may be difficult. Things in our life, in our world, in our reality, may not quite happen as we planned it. And wow, doesn't that sound like the year that we have experienced? But this Advent Sunday, this is what we celebrate. That Jesus will return to reign over his creation in power and glory. And we celebrate the coming re-celebration of the incredible gift from God. That God chose to love us so much that God chose to dwell with us in the birth of the baby Jesus, who in Matthew's gospel is named Emmanuel, God with us. You see, Mark's gospel, which is what we're going to be reading during Advent, constantly reminds us that our ancestors were crying out for a savior, crying out for Hamashiach, crying out for Messiah to come, to bring justice, to bring peace, to bring righteousness into the world. And we as the church, we wait for the return of that one. We wait and we hope. What a precious commodity to be able to hope that when all is said and done, this that occurs now is not the last word. But the last word is in Jesus, returning in power and glory. So we wait and we hope, knowing, knowing that Jesus will return. So we keep working, we keep watching, we keep awake. Now, it's an interesting sidebar to this lesson that in the time of Jesus, the people believed in these apocalyptic experiences, end of times to come. 
And they wanted to know when they were going to occur. This story of cosmic proportions, this story of sun darkened, moon not lighting, stars falling from the heavens. So Jesus tells that, tells the people that this is coming to watch for those signs. He, he relates it to the fig tree. But then at the end he says, look, I am not interested in speculation because about that day or hour, nobody knows. Not even Jesus knows, but only the Father. What Jesus wants is for Christ followers not to sit around with their abacus trying to calculate and figure out when these end times are coming. But what Jesus wants of Christ followers is to live an expectant life by keeping alert and watchful. Because in Advent, we are reminded that as a church, God entered the world to redeem it, to change it, to bring it back into right relationship with God. So our scripture during Advent is going to call us to action and going to call us specifically to the action of repentance, metanoia, to recognize our sins and our faults, and to turn around and return to God. And it's going to remind us of mission. We have a job to do as Christ followers. What we then do is that we remember that this is a good time for us to remember that we are redeemed people not reclaimed, not restored into the kingdom of heaven. That moment is coming in the future, but we are redeemed. We are by the grace of God through the love of Jesus Christ made right with God the Father. We need to realize that this is a new beginning, that this is a time for us to reclaim that new beginning, to examine our lives, to see what helps us move out in repentance and mission, and continue that, and to see what keeps us from repentance and mission, and to do away with that. It's a time to let go of everything that stands in our way of receiving God's gift, God's gift of Jesus, in birth and in Jesus' daily visitations. Remember the story last week of sheep and goats. We're told that Jesus is in our lives on a daily basis. Advent calls us to prepare for something much bigger than just the yearly revisitation and recelebration of Christmas. Advent calls us to the mission of being the Christ followers, of being the church, of being the gathered ones, and that's to pay attention to the world around us, and specifically to aloneness in the world, to hunger in the world, to suffering in the world, to anything that we can do to make things right in the life of another person. So Advent calls us to keep awake, to have an urgency, to have a longing. But Advent also calls us to remember that we are a people that live in constant hope that things will not always be as they are, that something is coming, that something is even bigger than Christmas is coming. You see, the world still waits. The world still longs, as it did in the time of Jesus, for justice and for peace. The world waits for God. Advent reminds us and helps us to proclaim to this world that Jesus is coming in glory. What a wonderful word, glory. We, we don't use that word enough, but it should reach down into your soul, glory. Coming in glory as Emmanuel, the birth of the baby, God with us. And yes, one day, one day, returning in glory through the clouds of heaven. God transformed us in the birth of the baby Jesus, and God will transform us again in the return of Jesus to reign as king. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake, keep alert. I preach these words to you in the name of God, creator, redeemer, sustainer.
And let us now say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus the Christ, you reign in glory as our King. And to you we lift our voices in prayer, saying, Illumine our darkness and keep us alert. Creator of the stars in the sky, the sun, and the moon, you are the light by which we wake and work. Let us pray. Illumine our darkness and keep us alert. Surround your church, her leaders and people, with the armor of light. We pray especially for all baptized ministers of the gospel and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. Strengthen them as they reach out to you in prayer and hope. Open their hearts to your will. Let us pray. Illumine our darkness and keep us alert. We pray for our leaders, especially our presidents, prime ministers, and president-elect our governors and the Congress, parliaments and the courts of our lands. Savior of the nations, guide those who govern and awaken those they lead, that they may all live in the spirit of cooperation and share so that all have enough food, care, and peace. Let us pray. Live in our darkness and keep us alert. For people across the world whose spirits bend under the yoke of oppression and struggle, Give the people of this community a sense of togetherness and support. Open your eyes to those who fall by the wayside and whose faces and needs remain invisible. Let us pray. Lover of our souls, we ask your blessing on those who struggle with illness, anxiety, grief, or isolation, especially. Let us pray. Rejoicing in the reign of Christ all over creation, we offer our thanksgivings, intercessions for others, and petitions for ourselves. Let us pray. That the righteous dead may live into eternal life, and that those who have gone astray may receive the mercy of the Maker, especially. Let us pray. Illumine our darkness and keep us alert. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. 
strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together. Eternal God, by whose power we are created, and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day and all our days in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, whose providence our Savior Jesus Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. Amen. And may God's blessing be with you, Christ peace be with you, and the Spirit's outpouring be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless our Savior. Thanks be to God.